Tonight's breaking news in one Trump trial, which we reported at the top of the broadcast, comes hard on the heels of potentially good breaking news for him in another. We've learned that Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg is okay with postponing his hush money trial if the judge agrees. And this comes just days after federal prosecutors handed over thousands of pages of documents from their own investigation, after which they decided not to bring charges. As you know, the New York trial is set to begin on the 25th of this month. Pushing it ahead a month would mean it could begin the same day the Supreme Court has set for oral arguments on presidential immunity in the January 6th case. The former president, of course, does not have to be there for that, but he will have to attend his criminal trial. Joining us now with more, CNN Chief Legal Affairs Correspondent Paula Reed. So how did this happen with the trial date less than two weeks away? Anderson, I think the judge is going to have the same exact question. If this is a surprise twist, it certainly gives a boost to Trump, who has been employing the strategy of just trying to delay all of his criminal cases. And delays ahead of trials, that's, that's not an unusual occurrence. But here, this delay is the result of the fact that both sides now need to review tens of thousands of pages of evidence that was only handed over by federal prosecutors on Wednesday. Remember, this is a state case. So this is information coming from previous federal investigations. Why is it just coming in now? Well, it depends who you ask. The Trump team insists that the Manhattan district attorney that is bringing this case against former President Trump, that they have withheld it. The prosecutors insist that the Trump team just waited until earlier this year to subpoena the evidence as part of an effort to delay. Now, the Trump team wants to push this case back 90 days. Prosecutors say they wouldn't object to a 30-day delay, but ultimately, it'll be up to the judge. And do we know when the judge would make a decision? Well, Anderson, this case was scheduled to start in 10 days, so I would expect a decision quite soon. Open question, though, is whether this judge is going to want to have a hearing or a teleconference just to press the parties on some of these issues, but I would expect this in a matter of days. And does, so how does that impact the overall calendar of Trump's court case? Because this was supposed to be the first one. Yeah, and it was the only one that was firmly on the calendar. Now, with the help of our, our calendar graphic here, I mean, the other three criminal trials right now are in limbo. The January 6th federal prosecution, it's unclear when that's going to go or if it'll go at all, because in April, the Supreme Court will hear arguments on whether former President Trump has immunity to shield him from that case. And then we don't expect a decision there until probably mid to late June. Now, in May, you see the classified documents trial is there. Look, that's just in pencil. We were in court two weeks ago where the judge, Eileen Cannon, a Trump appointee, she heard arguments about when she could push that back. And based on what we heard while I was down in Florida, Anderson, I think she would probably put that in er August at the earliest. Now, you also have the Georgia case that Fonnie Willis said she wanted to bring in August. Currently, there is, of course, an open question of whether she will still oversee that case. And those efforts to disqualify her certainly will have delayed that case beyond August. So, Anderson, with this new request for a delay, we'll see what the judge does. But right now, it is not clear if former President Trump will face any criminal prosecution before November. All right, Paula Reed, thanks. Back with Jeff Tubin, Jennifer Rogers, and Andrew McCabe. Also joining us, Margaret Hoover, host of Firing Line on PBS. It, Andrew, does it make sense to you that the Southern District, the federal prosecutors, I mean, why would they just now send this stuff over? I know they were subpoenaed, but couldn't they have sent this stuff to the Manhattan DA earlier? There's not a good answer for that question. Um, you know, there, I think on the surface, the multiple prosecutors' offices in New York, so you have Manhattan, and then you have the two federal prosecution offices, the Southern District and the Eastern District. On the surface, we always hear about good cooperation, the law enforcement community, but in the nitty gritty of individual cases, in my own experience, for having been an agent there for a decade or so, um, these, case, these requests for evidence or access to each other's witnesses are often fraught with competition and uh, defensiveness. Prosecutors want to be very careful before they turn over documents to another prosecutor's offices to ensure that they're not going to use them or need them at some point in the future. I would expect there were some calculations like that involved or basic bureaucratic delay. It takes a lot of approvals and up the chain of command. Well, I mean, Jennifer, in the, in the filing, D.A. Bragg blames the former president's legal team saying that they didn't try to seek the records until January, he, he wrote. We note that the timing, the current production of additional materials from the USAO is a function of defendant's own delay. But, I mean, if Bragg knew this material was out there, couldn't he have asked for it? Yeah, it depends what it is, and we don't have a great idea about that. We may learn more when they file their actual substantive response, either tomorrow or Monday. Um, but it sounds like at least some of these materials, a lot of them are bank records and things that probably aren't so critical, 
but some of them at least are statements of people like Michael Cohen, who's going to be a witness. That's stuff that, that they should have, the defense should have. So if there are statements of Michael Cohen that weren't turned over previously, they need to have them. We don't know what Alvin Bragg knew that the feds had is the problem. But right? Jeff, Jeff, does that make sense to you? This is all so outrageous. You're, you're all being very polite here. I mean, the, the U.S. Attorney's Office in Manhattan, the Southern District, according to the Manhattan DA, the DA asked for these documents last year, mm -hmm. and the D U.S. Attorney's Office, for whatever reason, chose not to turn them over. As a result, they only turned them over just very recently, which the DA says is all the Southern District's fault. Why didn't the Southern District cooperate with these fellow prosecutors? I mean, if, if Al obviously Alvin Bragg, I would think, would want to see any interviews that Michael Cohen gave And he to asked for them. And he asked for them, and the U.S. attorney said no. And the U.S. attorney apparently has thousands more records that they're going to turn over sometime in the future, which could lead to more delays. And by the way, once these records are turned over, you can be sure the defense is going to say, well, this raises a whole new set of issues, so we have to file more motions and ask for more delays. This is a embarrassment to the law enforcement community, and the only beneficiary is Donald Trump. Wow. Margaret? Yes. I, I was kept, kept waiting for you to blame SDNY, but you're just too polite. I mean, I, I did text with a former SDNY prosecutor earlier. And I said, you guys screwed this up, right? And he said, he's, yes and yes. I mean, it was, it was all on background, of course. But, but I mean, how can they screw up a case which... Because... I mean, because I, it, you it understand, it, our eyes are wide open here. It's, this is not like, you know, uh, you've got a massive firewall. All of this is playing out in the press. If you have documents that are germane, right. share them immediately. This is relevant. I don't, I mean, you can, yeah, you can defend. I get that, but my but point I, is, I, like, I this is part. not uncommon. Prosecutors approaching each other uh, with uh, answering requests for documents, it usually comes at an arm's length. Well, I'll think about it, and when I get around to it, I'll, I'll calculate as to whether or not there's a one in a million chance I might need these documents for my own case, and if there is, you're never getting them. Mm. So that's the sort of reluctance that goes into these requests. It should never have happened in this case. I absolutely agree with there's, you, but here we are. There's a word for that policy. It's bad. It's absolutely. bad policy absolutely. to have, you know, prosecutors fighting with each other and not cooperating with each other when that I mean, is there the Was there an attitude at the Southern District of New York where they thought, oh, this Bragg case is kind of thin gruel and, and we don't have to pay I attention can't, to it? I cannot imagine that. But uh, they wouldn't weigh in on somebody else's case. What they would do maybe is say, maybe we still have a strand of this investigation that's open. You know, we're not going to turn this over for some reason the that current, they have, as the Andy was saying. The footing of this case embarrasses them to some degree, right? Here's Alvin Bragg basically making a case that they walked away from. So that does not shroud them in prosecutorial aggression and glory, mm. which is where they prefer to be. So the response to that is to not give over evidence, which makes them look even worse. I mean, that's... And that's why yeah. I don't think that that was the reason. I mean, it, it, you know, you're going to turn it over now in response to a subpoena. It's just going to look worse. I can't imagine they made that deliberate decision not to turn it over beforehand. But we'll maybe we'll know more when they... Uh, so, Morgan, I mean, for... I mean, for the former president, this is a huge political win. I mean, delay, delay, delay. Win, win, win. That's, and it also and that's points to dysfunction well and, you know, it feeds into all the all, conspiracy theories. All the, all the fake news and conspiracy theories that he's, he's winding up anyway. The, I mean, the, the truth is, though, this isn't the case, which, I mean, we know this isn't the case when it went to trial that was going to be the case that that is, at least from a political perspective, the one that is going to help, uh, you know, the opposition or people who are concerned about Trump returning to the presidency really... Um, make the the political argument that like this is he shouldn't go back to the presidency because of a business misdemeanor that was worth about one hundred and thirty thousand dollars. I mean that's not the case. It's the case where he took secret documents and top secret documents and hid them in the shower in Mar-a-Lago illegally. That's the case you want to litigate politically nationally in the months before and weeks before the, the national election, the I, presidential I, I election. I think that's a little unfair to the Manhattan DA's case. I mean, the Manhattan DA's case, at least the way they're putting it, is that the reason all of the, this money went to Stormy Daniels was to hide stuff from the voters on the eve of the 2016 uh, they're election. They're saying it's an election interference it, It's an election case. interference case. Which makes and, it and, not, and, not a know, misdemeanor as a normal business fraud case. And I it, understand that. It's, there's just no precedent for that. Well, there's no precedent for a lot of things Donald Trump That's did. But, but it is also true that if he's convicted, 
he will be a convicted felon. And in America, that's usually considered not a good qualification to be president of the United States. Do you think this is going to go to trial before the election? I do. I, I, I think of, uh, this one, I think, will somehow stagger to trial um, in, you know, sometime in the spring. And to your right. political point, actually, it, the polling bears out that if he is convicted in any trial or in any case, in all of the seven tipping point jurisdictions, states that are close that will decide the election, this dramatically changes. That's what people say how, to pollsters, but who knows if, if that's true? I mean, that, they said that to pollsters when they also said they would vote for him over right. Biden we at the same see. time.